have to fear him. In war, fear there is no substitute for victory. Let us never negotiate out of fear. We stand undivided, forever united, fighting hand in hand for the liberty we burn, for glory and honor for our sons and daughters, ever mindful of the lessons we've learned. Let the torch of freedom burn. You've found your way to the intersection of faith and the culture. This is Well Builders Live. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Rick Green here with David Barton. We're looking at things from both a biblical and a historical point of view. And you found us on a Friday, which means it's Good News Friday. We love sharing good news with you from across the nation. I love it. I love getting to listen to some of these stories and learn that there's good things happening, whether it's local activists or people in a church just doing something in their community that's positive or a Supreme Court case or something moving in the political realm. I mean, there's just so many good things, and too often we only hear the negative. So it's great to get some of those good, positive reports. David, thanks for sharing so much of that with us. Happy to. And there is a ton of stuff, man. I'm looking at a really thick stack on my desk. There's no way we're going to get through it today, but there's a lot of good news out there. All right. Well, what would you like to start with, a a particular part of the country or a a topic, the courts? Where are we going? Yeah, let's do all of that. All of those. And you said to start with, and I'm I'm sitting here looking at several... I'll just pick this one. This one comes out of Virginia. Uh, the new governor there, Terry McAuliffe, was elected. He is. They didn't elect at the same time we did. They have off-year elections. But Terry McAuliffe won, won the race there for governor and promised a huge uh, gun rights agenda, strict, stricter gun control laws, et cetera. And the good news is that every one of his gun control bills got killed in the lead. Every one. Everyone was gun. He didn't make a single gun control bill to the legislature. So Virginia actually stood up for the Second Amendment. Imagine that the the state of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all those guys who spoke so openly about the right to keep and bear arms is still alive and well in the state of Virginia. And the governor there was thoroughly rebuffed. Not a single one of his gun control bills made it through. Got to love it. Got to love it. Good stuff. Uh, Let's go to the Presbyterian Church USA. Now, this is a liberal denomination kind of like the Episcopalians, American Episcopalians as they become. Now, Episcopalians worldwide are not liberal, but the American version is, as the American version several denominations are very liberal, the United Church of Christ, etc., cetera, uh, United Methodist. But the Presbyterian Church USA just voted to approve same-sex marriage in Presbyterian Church USA. Now, don't confuse that with uh with PCA, Presbyterian Church of America, that's the conservative side. That's the, that's the guys who actually believe the Bible. But Presbyterian Church USA, you know, they're they're wrong on so many issues. Uh, they just kind of go where the progressives go rather than where the Bible goes. Now, this is a this is a just to help wrap my head around this. This is a religious denomination that 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 claims to base their religion on the Bible and and the words of Christ and and. So I'm, I guess somewhere they found in the Bible that same-sex marriage is biblical. Well, these guys would all qualify for the current U.S. Supreme Court because they believe the Bible is a living, changing document. Oh, okay. So it's not it's not the definitive standard. It's just kind of suggestions, not— It's not, guidelines yeah. if you want to follow them, but if you don't, we'll just rewrite the Constitution and tell you what it means. Oh, I mean the Bible. I mean, that's why I'm saying they could be Supreme Court justices. Gotcha, gotcha. They are the uh, thing of wax. The, the Bible is a thing of wax in their hands, as the, the Constitution often is in the hands of the— uh, the progressives on the Supreme Court. But here is what was unexpected. Because these guys came out in favor of same-sex marriage, take a guess who jumped off board with them. So people from within their denomination. People affiliated with them. It's a a coalition of, of folks that are affiliated with the Presbyterian Church USA, PCUSA. It'd have to be probably... You know, I guess in every organization you've got, in every religious denomination, you've got some that are that are actually reading the Bible and wanting to adhere uh, to the Word of God. So, uh, I guess some within their within their group were uh, were saying, "Let's let's stay biblical." So let's forget it. But I don't know which group it would be. You don't know which group. What if I told you it was thirty four thousand churches? I, I didn't even know they had that many. Well, this is an outside affiliated group with PCUSA, 34,000 black churches 
announced that they're officially breaking ties with PCUSA. They've been affiliated with them, and 34,000 black churches said, nope, that's not the way we read the Bible. And kudos to those churches for standing up and saying, because, I mean, so much of this stuff with the gay rights movement has tried to make it a civil rights issue. And and blacks of all folks know this is not a civil rights issue. Uh, You've not been discriminated against economically. As a matter of fact, homosexuals tend to be much higher in economic bracket, much higher education. They tend to be much, much higher uh, and, and the jobs don't even try to compare that to a, to a civil rights and what happened in segregation, what happened with the racism, et cetera. So 34,000 black churches just announced that they are breaking ties with the Presbyterian Church USA. That is that's, really cool. That's, oh, it's, it's hard for me to even, <laughs> even comprehend that. I mean, that number is huge. 34,000 black churches. Has and said, the fact that us. they would take a stand like this is just great. And the fact that they would go public taking a stand and do it, not just a silent break, but a public break in the press, 34,000 black churches, that's really good news. I, I would have been excited about 340 or 3,400. 34,000? I'll take it in a heartbeat. That's 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 incredible. All right, we got to take a quick break. That's massively good news. That, that means that some people do actually adhere to the Word of God and want to keep that uh, that biblical standard. We'll be back in a moment here on Wobblers Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. In the case Abedin versus Shemp, The Supreme Court ruled that the Bible could no longer be an independent textbook in public school curriculum. Would our founding fathers have agreed? Benjamin Rush certainly would have disagreed. Benjamin Rush was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, and he was a leading educator of the day. In fact, he was the first founding father to call for free public schools. Benjamin Rush declared, The great enemy of the salvation of man, in my opinion, never invented a more effective means of extinguishing Christianity from the world than by persuading mankind that it was improper to read the Bible at schools. The Bible should be read in our schools in preference to all other books. In the view of founding father Benjamin Rush, the Bible was the textbook of preference for public schools. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wobblers Live. It's Friday. We're looking at some good news from across the nation. I uh, already started, David, with some some great news. Thirty four thousand churches uh, saying we're gonna we're gonna stand on biblical principle and not go with uh, the Presbyterians uh, Presbyterian churches move towards uh, same sex marriage. Yeah, it's good. And here's a, another piece of good news. It's kind of following up for some previous national news, but I think folks remember the Hobby Lobby decision. And part of the Hobby Lobby decision was the Conestoga Wood Specialties. And those were the two that were there that both Christian-run organizations said, look, we're, we, we're not going to go against our Christian values by funding abortion. We're, we're just not going to do that. And so the Supreme Court came down on the side of Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood. And now um, the Obama administration has now agreed to pay the legal fees for Conestoga Wood because they, they won. And so the legal fees are now being paid. Now, gra- grab this. Uh, For Conestoga Wood to defend their constitutionally guaranteed rights of conscience all the way to the Supreme Court, any clue how much it cost them? Wow. I would think millions. Yeah, it would be millions. But because our friends at the ADF did this, and they do so much of this stuff at a much lower rate, and they often do stuff for free because folks like us fund them, the actual cost turned out to be $570,000. Now... The Obama administration is now going to pay that to Conestoga. A couple, it's great that they're getting paid, but a couple of things take me off here. Number one is I'm paying that to Conestoga Woods. The Obama administration is arrogant, said we don't believe the Constitution. We don't believe in, in the, the right of, of religious expression and conscience that's been protected by law since 1640. We're going to ignore that. So because of their arrogance, now we taxpayers have to, to add some more to the national debt on this. I'm glad Conestoga Wood is getting paid. They should be paid. It was right for them to be paid. But that's the next point is, you know what? Unless you're Conestoga Wood, you know how hard it is to take your issue to the U.S. Supreme Court against paid career attorneys 
who these attorneys at the U.S. Justice Department, they don't get paid by whether they win or not. This is not a free market where the good guys win. They get paid because they keep printing money over at the Treasury building, and they can stay in there for years and years and years, lording it over average citizens who may get their rights stepped on. But to prove that you got your rights stepped on, it may cost you millions of dollars to do so. So the good news is Conestoga does get paid for this as they should have been paid. The Obama administration should never have done this. Bad news is that we pay for it out of our tax pockets, and it shows just how hard it is for an average citizen to take on the power of the federal government. This was never designed to be that way. It was we the people own the government, not the government own us. But kudos to, to Conestoga Wood Specialties for, for getting, getting this stuff paid and, and being able to practice their constitutional rights without having to pay for it. Well, and, and thankfully uh, having the courage to take on this fight, even in the first place, because you know you had, you know, you got to have those conversations early on. You're going, can we afford to do this? Can we even? Because yeah. a lot of people get their rights trampled on, and they just, they just have to, you know, not even be able to fight because they don't have the money or they don't have an organization backing them. So just, I mean, big thumbs up to them for taking on the fight in well, the first place. And John Jay said, when you perceive that your constitutional rights have been violated, you have to defend and assert them. And, and kudos to, to Conestoga with specialties for perceiving their rights are violated and then defending and asserting them. Because as we've been told so often by Matt Staver and Kelly Shackover and Alan Sears and all these guys that run these national institutes, the, the biggest reason they don't win is because people won't stand and fight. If they would simply say, I'm taking this to court, they'll win the case. But I, I don't want to get into controversy. I don't want my kids to have to go through that. You know, and because they want, then it costs other people across the nation because they won't defend and assert their rights, then other people uh, get nailed with violations and somebody else has to step up and do it elsewhere. So perceiving, defending, asserting is what John Jay said we should do with the Constitution. And, and that's exactly what Conestoga Wood Specialties did. Great news. We're going to get some more good news when we return. Stay with us here on Wobble Live. Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. Shortly after the American Revolution, America had become the envy of the world. It still remains a wonder of the modern world as 219 years later, America has become the longest ongoing constitutional republic in the history of the world. What was the foundation upon which our founding fathers established this great nation? According to John Adams, the foundation was Christianity. John Adams declared, the general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the general principles of Christianity. Now I will avow that I then believed and now believe that those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God. According to Founding Father John Adams, it was the principles of Christianity which formed the foundation for American government. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back to Wall Builders Live. Thanks for staying with us today. It's Good News Friday. We're bringing you some good news from across the nation. There's more of that on our website at wallbuilderslive.com. Click on the archive section there. You can get past Friday programs, also get those Thursday Foundations of Freedom programs, and a lot of other uh, interviews and just great information there. And also get a list of our radio stations. If you've been listening online and you're wondering if we're on a station in your area, uh, all of our stations are listed there on the website. And if we're not in your area, grab some of these programs on the website and send them over to your local stations and encourage them to pick up Wall Builders Live. I'm Rick Green, back here with David Barton. David, give us some more good news. This one's going to be a little personal. It's a little outside the realm of what we do, but I love it because it, it, it deals with the federal government and another limitation on the federal government. But this deals with horses. And I'm a cowboy, got the ranch, the horses, all the stuff that go with it. And one of the things that I do, uh, like you, Rick, I speak to hundreds of groups a year. I speak to about 600 uh, audiences a year. And so what I do is two or three times a year, I will knock off time, take two or three days, take the horses, We'll go disappear out in some wild place and ride. And and one of my riding buddies is Tim Brooks. We have Tim on, on the program, often the pastor up in, in Arkansas. And Tim, a great pastor, great teacher. Um, you know, you've you've said great things about him. I do too. Oh, I love a, him. He's a great friend. And Tim is also a great horseman. And not only does he ride in rodeos competitively, but he shows horses. And 
we ride quarter horses and Tennessee walkers, et cetera, and he shows Tennessee walking horses. As a matter of fact, he has grand world grand champion Tennessee walking horses that he shows. Now, what happens is you have the animal rights activists. HSUS is probably the biggest group, um, the, the Humane Society of the United States, and these guys are against any kind of human contact with animals, in, in essence. In other words, they would argue that having domesticated species of beef is bad because if all these cattle were alive out in the wild, you wouldn't have Charlet, you wouldn't have Santa Gertrudis, you wouldn't have Angus, you wouldn't have Hereford, you wouldn't have Holstein. They'd just all be intermixed. So it's because of human action that you have these different species. And same with dogs. You, you have different breeds of dogs because of human interaction. If it was just up to the dogs, that they'd be... That's right. If it were up to the dogs, they'd look like coyotes and be mangy and be sick all the time. They're saying they don't want interaction with cows. Well, the analogy would be the horses, because if you look at horses who have not had interaction with humans, like wild Mustangs, that's why we can't ride Mustangs as a cowboy. They've been so inbred for so many generations, so much incest going on that they lack stamina, they lack strength, they lack health. So human interactions actually help these species, not the opposite. So for, forget all those arguments. Humane Society of the United States is basically wants no interaction with animals and humans. So they have really taken over the U.S. Department of Agriculture, particularly under this administration, and they've gotten into the, the, the vet business over the horses. And so way back about 50 years ago, uh, there was some bad stuff going in the horse industry, particularly the walking horse industry. If you've seen those Tennessee walking horses, they raise their feet really high in the air. And they're trained to do that, and it doesn't hurt them, and vets have shown that all for years. But one of the things that was done 50 years ago is there were some trainers that were really corrupt guys, and they said, you know, if we put some kind of acid stuff on the back of that horse's foot, he'll really raise it high. Well, it's like when you put your hand on a stove. It hurts, and so you, you really pop your hand off there. And so they did that, and that's called soaring a horse, S-O-R-I-N-G. You make their hoof soar so that when they step on it, they want to pop it back off the ground. And only a handful of guys did that, but in 1970, Congress passed the, the Soaring Act, which says you cannot do that to horses. It's the right act to pass. Well, what's happened is the HSUS has come in, and by the way, these are the guys that went and tried to shut down the circuses because they don't want human contact with animals. They tried to shut down what they call the puppy mills, which, again, is just different breeds of dogs. Uh, they tried to shut down rodeos, but they figured out too many people support rodeos, and they got crushed with that. Then they went to New York City and tried to shut down the horse and carriage rides there because, again, people, human interaction. Well, what they've done is they've gone after the Tennessee walking horse industry trying to shut it down. Uh, Tennessee walking horse industry is a several billion dollar industry, provides about $35 million a year in, in charity to associations, that the earnings that come in off this. And, and so they, these guys are all, they're, they're country guys, they're, they're cowboys. They, they don't deal with Washington. They didn't know about lobbyists and and so what they do is they send these vets out to inspect the horses, and they will walk up to these horses that are about to be showed, including Tim Brooks, and they said, oh, that horse has got soaring on it. It's been scarred. He's He violates the law. You go, scarred? Where's the scar? And so we, we bring in vets from the Kentucky Derby all the way through Auburn, all these great vet clinics, Texas A&M. They look and say, there's no scarring there. There's no soaring there. There's no violation here. The vets said, we'll prove we're wrong. Take us to court. It doesn't matter how many years it lasts. We'll do it. But until then, you can't show that horse. They specifically told Tim Brooks that if you have a grand champion horse, you had to have hurt your horse to make it a grand champion. You're kidding me. No, they, that's what they told him. They disqualified his horses because of human contact again. And if, if you've ever been to these Tennessee walking horse shows, the big walking horse shows, they will sell those horses for about $3 bucks a piece. I've been in the stalls with those horses. They're better than the house I live in. These horses get baths every day. They get massages. They get rub downs. They have horse chiropractors that come in. They have padded stalls. They, it is the life of a king. And you're telling me that I had to injure my horse to make him a grand champion? You're nuts. And so finally, all of this, you know, the, the guys kind of got organized and we've been trying to help them deal with some of this. But finally, this thing made it into court and, and it said, hey, these vets and the federal courts whacked these vets in the USDA, these, these, you know, again, Humane Society vet kind of folks and whacked them and said, you can't do this. This is not what the law was about. So we actually have a federal court back to the reason of upholding the law that was abuse. Instead, the Department of Agriculture had been trying to limit all human contact with animals. As a matter of fact, if you go to their website, they have meat-free Mondays. 
Now, if the Department of Agriculture is supposed to be promoting cattle and horses and <laughs> yeah, sheep wait. and lambs and goes meat free Department Mondays, of Agriculture has meat free Mondays. Meat free Mondays. You know, so they have been taken over by activists, and this is outside our normal pur- purview of good news. But it is good news because it again limits a regulatory agency. It limits these out of control regulators that think they can do anything and be unaccountable. And by and large, that's the way it has been. Uh, but in this case, it happens to deal with horses, and, and because that's a personal thing to me, I, I love it when, when federal regulators get whacked like this, and this is a great story. Yeah, let's put them back in their box. All right, we've got to take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment with more good news here on Wild Butters Live. Meat Free Mondays. Have you noticed the vacuum of leadership in America? We're looking around for leaders of principle to step up, and too often, no one is there. God is raising up a generation of young leaders with a passion for impacting the world around them. They're crying out for the mentorship and leadership training they need. Patriot Academy was created to meet that need. Patriot Academy graduates now serve in state capitals around America, in the halls of Congress, in business, in the film industry, in the pulpit, in every area of the culture. They're leading effectively and impacting the world around them. Patriot Academy is now expanding across the nation, and now's your chance to experience this life-changing week that trains champions to change the world. Visit PatriotAcademy.com for dates and locations. Our core program is still for young leaders, 16 to 25 years old, but we also now have a citizen track for adults. So visit the website today to learn more. Help us fill the void of leadership in America. Join us in training champions to change the world at PatriotAcademy.com. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. Good news Friday today, bringing you good news from across the nation. More of that on our website at wallbuilderslive.com. I'm Rick Green, back here with David Barton. How about some more good news, David? Well, let's go. Uh, and by the way, we mentioned earlier about the Conestoga Wood case and the Hobby Lobby case. And you would think that after the Supreme Court rendered that decision, that, that cases like that would be pretty easy. But apparently not, because Notre Dame said, great, we don't have to pay our employees for abortions. That's not going to be covered in our health care. We are a Catholic institution. We, above all people, champion the right to unborn life, and we're not going to pay for abortions. And yet the federal courts, even after the Hobby Lobby decision came in and said, oh, yes, you will. And so they ordered Notre Dame to, to they wouldn't let them have the uh, contraception uh, exclusion. And the U.S. Supreme Court actually weighed in and said, no, 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 guys. Notre Dame gets the same exception that Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Woods did So you have the Supreme Court again reaffirming that conscience is to be protected. And so that's another another good one because the the Seventh Circuit messed this up. Even after the Hobby Lobby decision, the Seventh Circuit messed it up, but now it gets straightened out again, and that's good news. Yeah, excellent news. One from California. This involves our friend Rob McCoy. Uh, Rob is a pastor out in California. We had him on uh, back before the election because he was also running for the state assembly out there. I guess we had him on after the election. He narrowly lost, and they, they... now grab this. But we, it was close. We've got governor's races that will go for about $5 million total in the race. We've got the average congressional race runs about $2.2 million to win a congressional race. Now, as I recall, I think they put $7 million into defeating him in a state representative race, if you can imagine that. That's, that's, how, that's how scared California was of having a pastor actually get elected to the legislature. But he's got a great church out there. It's a growing church. I've spoken there. I think you've spoken there. He's a great guy. And they have a Christian school as well. Now, and notice I did use the word Christian school. I, I, I didn't say school. They, they've got a Christian school, and part of what they do is teach these biblical values. And so with the teachers who teach there, they want to make sure those teachers have some spiritual values and that those teachers have a spiritual view of things. And so what they require is that if you don't go to our church, and you're a teacher, we do want a pastor's letter of recommendation saying that, yeah, you've got your spiritual life in order, the pastor vouches for you, and you're going to be able to train kids in spiritual things. Makes sense, right? I would think so. I think that's kind of the purpose, right? You would think so. And yet two teachers filed suit against him on that and said, you can't make us get a pastor's recommendation. You've hired us, and we'll teach what we want. Whoa, time out here. So this goes to a court in California. 
and pretty easy to understand how California is on a lot of these things. And yet the court came back and said, no, the school's right. That They can require you to have a pastor's recommendation because this is a spiritual school. It is a Christian school. You're supposed to be teaching Christian values, and they can ensure that their teachers do that. That is really good news because at the federal level, they've been pushing what's called ENDA, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, that says you cannot discriminate against anyone because of their beliefs. In other words, if you're a Democrat, you have to hire Republicans. If you're a Jew, you have to hire Catholics. If you're if you're a Baptist, you have to hire Pentecostals. No, you ought to be able to hire those who help further the, the message of your institution. And so Congress has been, under the Democrats, has been trying to push that. It's not going to happen under Republicans. But in California, they have done that, except that here in this case, they recognize that, you know, you have a right to hire people who believe what you believe. So that's really good news coming out of Little Oaks Christian School. Um, that's Calvary Chapel and, and Thousand Oaks. But it's it's a great, great victory. Well, it's a great victory for, for all of us because we, you know, that, that for churches, for schools, for all these different organizations that you would think would be an inherent American right to be able to hire the people that agree with you and, and uh, have you share your philosophy. Uh, we need to win those battles because, unfortunately, we got a lot of bullying from government and from groups saying, we're going to tell you how to run your business and, uh, and your school and your church, and you're going to hire people that don't even agree with you. Crazy stuff, but good news that we won that victory. So thanks for all the good news, David. Thank you for listening out there, folks. You've been listening to Wall Builders Live. We stand on Up faith in the culture. This is Wall Builders Live. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Rick Green here with David Barton. We're looking at things from both a biblical and a historical point of view. And you found us on a Friday, which means it's Good News Friday. We love sharing good news with you from across the nation. I love it. I love getting to listen to some of these stories and learn that there's good things happening, whether it's local activists or people in a church just doing something in their community that's positive or a Supreme Court case or something moving in the political realm. I mean, there's just so many good things, and too often we only hear the negative. So it's great to get some of those good, positive reports. David, thanks for sharing so much of that with us. Happy to. And there is a ton of stuff, man. I'm looking at a really thick stack on my desk. There's no way we're going to get through it today, but there's a lot of good news out there. All right. Well, what would you like to start with, a a particular part of the country or a a topic, the courts? Where are we going? Yeah, let's do all of that. All of those. And you said to start with, and I'm I'm sitting here looking at several. I'll just pick this one. This one comes out of Virginia. Uh, the new governor there, Terry McAuliffe, was elected. He is, they didn't elect at the same time we did. They have off-year elections. But Terry McAuliffe won, won the race there for governor and promised a huge uh, gun rights agenda, stric- stricter gun control laws, etc. And the good news is that every one of his gun control bills got killed in the le- – every one. Every one of his gun – he didn't make a single gun control bill to the legislature – so Virginia actually stood up for the Second Amendment. Imagine that, the, the state of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all those guys who spoke so openly about the right to keep and bear arms is still alive and well in the state of Virginia, and the governor there was thoroughly rebuffed. Not a single one of his gun control bills made it through. Got to love it. Got to love it. Good stuff. Uh, let's go to the Presbyterian Church USA. Now, this is a liberal denomination, kind of like the Episcopalians, American Episcopalians as they become now. Episcopalians worldwide are not liberal, but the American version is, as the American version of several denominations are very liberal, the United Church of Christ, etc., uh, United Methodist. But the Presbyterian Church USA just voted to approve same-sex marriage in Presbyterian Church USA. Now, don't confuse that with uh, with PCA, Presbyterian Church of America. That's the conservative side. That's that. That's the guys who actually believe the Bible. The Presbyterian Church USA, you know, they're they're wrong on so many issues. Uh, they just kind of go where the progressives go rather than where the Bible goes. Now, this is a this is a just to help wrap my head around this. This is a religious denomination that 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 claims to base their religion on the Bible and and the words of Christ and and 
So I'm, I, I guess somewhere they found in the Bible that same-sex marriage is biblical. Well, these guys would all qualify for the current U.S. Supreme Court because they believe the Bible is a living, changing document. Oh, okay. So it's not it's not the definitive standard. It's just kind of suggestions, not... It's not, guidelines yeah. if you want to... The only thing we have to fear is... In war, there is no substitute for victory. Let us never negotiate out of fear. We stand undivided. Forever united, fighting hand in hand for the liberty we burn, for glory and honor, for our sons and daughters, ever mindful of the lessons we've learned. Let the torch of freedom burn. You find your way to the intersection.